Hi, this is Jay Harwood. It's a special edition of Amazing Mets Conversation with our two brand new radio announcers. Well, not really new. Uh, Pat McCarthy, Keith Wright. I got one really tough question for you guys to start off with. What did you find out about Ralph Crandon? Do you know who Ralph Crandon is? <laughs> We're still working on that, Jay. <laughs> did you, did you, working? Yeah, honeymooners, well, of course. I mean, so before you would have bios, you know, let me let me make a few young. Keith, you're, just, you're 30, 28, right? It's 58. Mm-hmm. Howie Rose, 69. Do, what did they tell you about his trivia stuff before you started? I mean, you know, be on the edge of your seat, I think, is the biggest thing. Study that. I think there's a movie, Stripes, too, that I'm still working on watching. That's right. Well. I had some Seinfeld knowledge personally, so I was ready for that. But Honeymooners, that's, that's tough to sit through. How about you know who the second spitter was? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's, these are the quite. No, how long did it take you to get, I mean, Howie's a great guy. I mean... What were the trepidations uh, you know, two young guys working with one of the best guys in the business? You, 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 what, any trepidations? or? Well, Pat and I just had an amazing opportunity to do the Hall of Fame game, the broadcast mm. where both Gary and yeah. Howie went in because they were those guys were getting right. a chance to sit and relax. And so for us, we sat in Howie's chair and in his booth doing the game on Hall of Fame day, and he's going into the Mets Hall of Fame, and it was like, and that's you sit yeah. back, and Howie is just a wealth of knowledge. So it's intimidating for two broadcasters that want to come in and do a great job. And you could speak to this. We don't know as much as Howie because we haven't lived it as much as he has. Yeah, I'm supposed to met his story, and he knows a hundred million times more than I do. This for the fans. We have Pat does pre and post game, and when Howie has to travel, he teams with Keith. Did you guys know each other before you started? No, not at all. Yeah. The first time we met was we had an event here right after we got hired, and. Keith was walking out of an Uber. I walked out of my car, and we pointed at each other, and we're like, all right, here we go. Here we are. We spoke on the phone one time before that, and yeah. since then it's just been off and running. Was it hard to get adjusted to back and forth with you guys, or you know, when to talk, when not to talk? Or... No, not yeah, at all, which no. is very hard to do. Very hard to be able to have chemistry with somebody right away, but a lot of it is when you're off mic, grab a bite, yeah. have a beer get to know somebody, get to know when they like to speak, what they like to talk about. You listen to them, see when they jump in, when they don't, when you jump in and see how you mesh. And I think it's it's been awesome so, so far. So what's your favorite yeah. restaurant on the road? Ooh, favorite <laughs> restaurant Whatever's on the road. Whatever's open after yeah. 11 o'clock at night. Well, how about, not too many day games no. anymore. Not too many day games. Well, we went to Hugo Frogs in Chicago and yeah. we got this thing called the Muddy Bottom, which was a dessert about this big. And it was the two of us and Madge. And, we did our best, but uh, Madge's favorite place is the uh, the beef place, where we we get beef all the time. What do you call it? You know what I'm talking about? Portuguese beef place. Oh, like a Brazilian steakhouse. Yeah, they come out. Oh, yeah. Madge Fogo, loves that place. Fogo de Chao. He's yeah. a big Fogo de Chao yeah. guy. I remember right before the first series in Miami, we went out to dinner before the season started, and we were slicing meats and pulling out pieces of chicken. It was uh, it was quite a sport. One time I was in it. Bar, Bar- Bartolo Colon was in there eating. He was here before we left and after we left. He was still there eating. <laughs> Table for one. Yeah, you, you know, just the well, green, just the green uh, card was yeah. just up and ready to go. Yeah, but you guys have an advantage. You come up through the minors. We have a young team now. Both of you guys have been with, you know, Vientos, Beatty, and Alvarez, right? And some, you know, you, Lehigh. Iron pig. What does an iron pig look like, by the way? What does an iron pig look like? They probably well, serve it at Fogo de Chao. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they honestly might. I'm surprised they don't serve it at the ballpark yet. Uh, an iron pig. For the sake of the logo, yeah. is a pig coated in iron. Right. <laughs> Lehigh Valley, Allentown, Bethlehem, that area is known for the Bethlehem steel right. mills. And, you know, you can listen to Billy Joel's song and, and get an idea for that. So pig iron is something that yeah. comes from iron ore and stuff like that. So when the Ottawa Lynx relocated from Ottawa down to Lehigh Valley, they decided to tie the Lehigh Valley in with it. And they created the iron pigs from pig iron. Yeah. Keith, you had Alvarez. We were five years at Brooklyn. Alvarez and Beatty in the lower minors. Did, did you, what were your thoughts then? Did you think that he would be up this quickly, or you know, I mean, what were your, your thoughts about that? Yeah. So you're around so many minor league players, and you see the different types of players. The players that are just kind of happy to be there. The players that are trying to get better. And some guys that have, they are, their eyes almost look past you when you're talking to them. And I mean that in the way of, they're going to the next level. They're going to the higher levels, and they're going to the big leagues. Brett Beatty, I had that feeling right away because he, he felt like it was a it was a transitory moment. He's here for now. He's going to move on to the next level, but he carries himself like a professional. And with Alvarez, he was destroying people's lives on the mound. <laughs> you know, pitchers would 
would cower when, when Francisco Alvarez came to the plate. And the best part about this is everybody's seeing what they can do now. And to know, like, watching your favorite band play in the basement, those great songs. Right. You were there, 12 other people, and now they have a mainstream hit and everybody loves them. But you knew how good they were then. That's the sweetest part of it for me is I knew how good Beatty was. I really knew how good Alvarez was just because I saw them in these small ballparks. And you had, you tell me about one home run yesterday, Pat. You were telling me about Alvarez. Yeah, so I caught them all as they were coming up through the system. And Lehigh Valley and Syracuse played each other quite a bit, both being in the same division. And I knew that they were top prospects, right. didn't really know a ton about them. Francisco Alvarez comes up to Lehigh Valley, and if anybody's ever been to Coca Cola Park in, in Allentown, there's this Tiki Pavilion out in left field that is over the bullpens. It's kind of built the same way that the Great Wall of Flushing is built here at City Field. And he put one over the Tiki Pavilion in left field, and my jaw just dropped. And I looked at my partner at the time who was calling the play. I was, I was the analyst for it, and I just looked at him, and I said, I don't think I've ever seen a baseball right. go that far in this ballpark. Um, and then I, did, I went over to the Syracuse guys who were next door and, and said the same thing to them, and they had seen a lot of games at our ballpark before. So... I didn't know what to expect from him. I knew he was a big time prospect. When I saw that, I was amazed at him. I had always known he was a big power hitting catcher. I had no idea how he was built and how strong he was until I saw him up close when Syracuse came to Lehigh Valley. It was amazing. So you guys weren't aren't surprised at what they've done? Especially uh, I'm not, it's just cool to see how, you knew they're gonna be good, you knew they're gonna be potential all-star talent. It's just amazing to see that, oh, wow, they, they are not only good, but they are they could at their highest potential be better than most big league players are. And that's that's the hardest thing to read when you're on a minor league field and you see them playing against level talent. You think, well, could they hit big league pitching? But uh, not not surprised at all. Did they Fr recognize you when, oh. in, in, in this year? I mean, was there a recognition where you saw them? Through, like, when we had, you we had photo day. When we had photo day in St. Lucie. Five o'clock in the morning, everybody's set up with their places to right. go, and WCBS, we're sitting behind home plate. We're doing the liners. Oh, this is Jay Harwitz. You're listening to Mets baseball on right. WCBS. And here comes Beatty, and he's going through the motions, and he sees me, and his eyes lit up, and he, he gave me a hug, and he was like, congratulations. This is, I'm so happy for you. And that was like, That's nice. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. Alvarez, too. <laughs> Alvarez is, uh, he's, he's a clown in, in, a, in the best way possible, getting, getting these hugs from guys, because I was doing liners with them in Brooklyn. Right. They're saying, you taught us how to do this. You li this is Brett Bay listening to Brooklyn Cyclones baseball, and now we're doing it with the Mets. I got another tough question for you, Keith. You were in Brooklyn for five years. <laughs> how many Nathan's hot dogs did you have in five ah! years? Don't tell anybody this, Jay. Yeah. Is this being recorded? Don't yes. tell anybody. No. 2019 was my last year in, in, uh, in Brooklyn eating hot dogs. I probably had 38 hot dogs, 40 hot dogs that year, and we played 38 home games. And I've, after the season, I said, I'm going to try to go as far in my life as possible, never eating a hot dog ever again. Because I've had enough hot dogs to... For a lifetime. My favorite meal was hot dogs, fries, a jelly apple with the, with the crust on the top, and a shake. <laughs> the no. jelly apple, you told me about that. Yes. I, I've got to get a jelly apple. Yeah. But the, the crinkle cut Nathan's fries with a little the little red fork Love and the, the salt. The crabs are good. The, uh, the, the crabs, the little crab leg. <laughs> you know, Billy Harder was, was, was worked for me. Billy's done really well with his, uh, with his family and everything. Okay. So I understand you're a big fan of, uh, of Teddy Roosevelt. The Frisco Rough Riders? Yes. Is he yeah. your favorite president? Yeah. Uh, he, yes. Because <laughs> he's my favorite president. Well, <laughs> yeah. see, that's why we work so well together, Jay. <laughs> Before I say, I want, can you give me your guys, your top five minor league names, nicknames? The one that I just love, it's a new team, the Rocket City Trash, Trash Pandas, Pandas. Right. which is a nice way to say a raccoon. Yeah. But they don't have to say raccoon because they said the full name. So to sit there and every night, well, Rocket City Trash Pandas have a 2 nothing lead. You have to say that 4,000 times a year. I love that. How about you, Pat? What's your favorite word? Oh, gosh, there's so many. I love the Pensacola Blue Wahoos. <laughs> I think that, and they're one of the original, like, unique names. Love the Blue Wahoos. I think that one is awesome. You know, 2017, when I came into minor league baseball, is when things started to really switch. You know, the Rumble, the Mets became the Rumble Ponies. No more Mets. It was the big internet. Right. Now it's the Rumble Ponies. Now it's the Rumble Ponies. Now it's the Rumble Ponies. Um, yeah, I... I Space Cowboys down in Sugarland is great. And there's just a number of them. And then the other thing I love is when teams do the alternate nicknames. Yeah. Those are always entertaining as well. My favorite is I do this on purpose too with Howie when there's a new guy getting called up from whatever team on the opposition. 
I always make sure to say exactly, oh, he was with the Montgomery Biscuits. And yeah. just, so, just so Howie goes, <laughs> the what? <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, that's one of my favorite parts about it. Hey, I'm old enough, Pat, that I work with your dad, Tom, mm-hmm. uh, for a couple of years. Great guy. Giant fan. We talked about you're an Eagle fan. We'll let that go. <laughs> what, what did he tell you about Howie? Did, did he, I'm sure you asked. Yeah, uh, my dad has always said that this is one of the best booths he's always worked in, he's ever worked in in his yeah. life, between Howie and Madge. So, and, and, and the immortal, the, same, Chris, the immortal Chris, Chris Madjkowski. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he didn't have to really tell me much. I was able to just learn based on how he's always spoken about them. Yeah, you know, from 2008 till now, since he's no longer been with the Mets, he has always remained so close with Madge and with Howie that. He didn't really have to tell me much about them because I just watched how they interacted with each other. And those that know my father know he is a massive goofball and that's what he does. And I kind of have a lot of that in me. So <laughs> I've, I haven't had to change my personality in that way because of that, because they are so easygoing. And, but at the same time, they're just the most amazing mentors that you could have as a young broadcaster. So. Yeah, he really didn't have to tell me much. He told me to bring pie every once in a while to make sure that... <laughs> or you know, donuts, right? Or donuts, you know, yeah. apple cider donuts yeah. from uh, from different areas. But, you know, there's just... He made sure that I knew that I could be myself. You know, you go to a new place, you're going to be a little yeah. reserved. You're going to sit back. It's not my personality. It's not who I'm ever going to be. So to be able to go into a booth where I can be that person and not feel uncomfortable, that's the most important thing. And for me, that was the best advice that he could have given me was just know that you can be yourself and not have anything to worry about. Because you, you had the Mets job on your radio a long time. You actually took a demotion. You were double A, went back to single A to get close to here. What was your thought process with that? Yeah, because coming up in the minor leagues, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You... A lot of the players ask you this too. You go up with us, you know. You go low A, high A, double A, triple A in the major leagues, and that's certainly a, a process that worked. I mean, Pat is coming from triple A, and f- after doing it for a little while, I kind of saw the writing on the wall for a place like New York, which was I was in the double A Frisco booth in the press room with Dallas reporters, and seeing how those people interacted with the Frisco people, the minor league guys and the major league guys were pretty close, and I thought, hmm. I wonder if I went back to New York and I just got close, how much would that help? So I, as you said, took a quote-unquote demotion, which I would urge people out there that's not totally a demotion yeah. because here we are. Yep. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a taking a chance on myself to go from 140 games to 76 games and now be a short season A broadcaster, but to get the chance to work close to the big league team. And I figured if people can see how hard I work and, and that I'm – true to my, my craft, maybe this is the best way instead of being a AAA broadcaster in some remote area somewhere. Tom, you, 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 I'm calling you Tom. I did it once, <laughs> I think, Pat. You had an opportunity in the last couple of years to do some Philly games. You know, what was it like, you know, filling a few days? You worked with your dad a couple yeah. of times, right? What was that like? It was a pretty surreal experience. So the first times I was filling in for him, he was off doing football. So, you know, the Phillies called me up and I was able to do a couple big league games and 2021 and then come 2022 it was kind of a mix of working with him and filling filling in on the radio side when Scott Fransky went over to do TV so uh, that was interesting right because he would leave and I would come and guys would joke around about that a lot and then at the end of the season I was down in Houston I was doing sidelines for TV as the Phillies were clinching the wild card and my dad was calling play-by-play I was doing sidelines so he threw it down to me, so that way I could do an interview with Reese Hoskins after the Phillies went yeah. to the playoffs. And and then we went into the clubhouse together and were able to do interviews and stuff like that. Uh, so that was that was a really special yeah. moment for us. There's, there's a photo of us just outside the clubhouse that the Phillies team photographer took. Both of us are you know doused in champagne and stuff like that. And it's one of those photos that I'll always remember, not That's just great. because the experience to be in a major league clubhouse for a celebration is like no other. I mean, it's unbelievable. But just for us, that father-son moment, I mean, it's something that can never be taken away. Keith, what was it like uh, go to the locker room, for major league locker room the first time? Nerves, uh, anxious, you know, walking in, you know. Yeah, it's different. That's one of been one of the biggest challenges for me is is when you're in the minor leagues and you're in the clubhouse, I'm doing interviews, I'm helping 
I give out per diem before the road trip. Like I'm close with these guys in a way that is on the team side, like like you'd be or media relations right. would be. Mm -hmm. So when you come to the big league clubhouse and you expect to have maybe not exactly the same relationship, but it's it's so much different. These guys are making a lot of money and they're their own entities sometimes that you're not as close with them as you would be with the minor league guys. That's a bit of a challenge, but at the same time, there's so much coverage that a lot of the what you want out of that relationship is just a good story or something to tell on the air. There's enough articles and press conferences to gather information, but I will say I do I do miss the minor league mm -hmm. clubhouse, the fun that that would happen yeah. there and on the road trip. I came from a college background, and you know I worked at SID a long time. It's different, you close to the people and stuff like right. that. What was it like for you? Uh, I mean, the first time. Yeah, it, it's it's like Keith said. It's a very it's a very unique experience for the first time, and and for me. Coming over to the Mets, I didn't have a ton of relationships with a lot of these right. guys. I met some of them down in spring training, and, and that was a huge help. But a lot of the guys were away for the WBC, so we really didn't have that opportunity in spring training to make you know those early connections with guys in a more relaxed setting, right. which is what spring training is. So it, it's taken some time to you know kind of break through those barriers and stuff like that. But you know, guys start to recognize you. They see you on the bus. They see you on the charter, and I think that does really help. And when the young guys come up, I just tell them I work with Keith, and all of a sudden they're, you know, they start to smile. How many so. times have you been talking to Keith Hernandez when he said Keith? There's always one Keith. Well, it's now, young Keith. Now yeah. I'm young Keith, yeah, young which Keith. I'll take because I always like to be the young guy because then yeah. the pressure's off, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm not going to call him old Keith. Yeah. Just regular Keith. Yeah. Uh, he's been just a, my favorite thing in life is laughing. And Keith Hernandez, if you're with him for two seconds, yeah. you're laughing because he's laughing. Yeah. That's been that's been the coolest part. This month is the 40th anniversary of the trade. You know, for How about uh, that? you know, and, and uh, I, I took my personal story with Keith, he hated New York. He didn't want to come to New York. So Frank Cash and the GM at the time asked me to do something special for Keith. We were in Montreal. I got this big white limousine for him. I went to the wrong gate. I wound up taking the limo <laughs> back to the hotel. He took the the, the, the cab back. So. Now, our, our relationship got better, you know, it, it got better through That's the amazing. years. You know. So you got to enjoy the limo he did? I got, to, I was the whole, <laughs> so that day we walked into the locker room and Tom Seaver walked over to Keith and said, welcome to the Stems, Keith. And he said, Stems, you know, it's, it's met spelled backwards. Yeah. That's what everybody was, we weren't good at it. We always used to be the Stems and stuff. But, but you know, so you, you, I've known Howie a long time, nicest guy you ever meet. And he always took much more good things about you. You know he respects what you do, and I know you respect him. And and you know, and um, you got to, you know. So what show are you working on now on the air? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, he he gave me the movie Stripes, which I uh, I was gonna watch the other day, but it was like three ninety nine. So I you know I'm, I got to find a way to pirate that somehow. Don't put that in there. Yeah. But um. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's on my list of, of things to watch. But I did look you to find been, it the other day. I couldn't. <laughs> my, my favorite movie is American Graffiti. Mm, love yeah, that. Ron I, Howard. That's yeah, my, sure. That's my, that's my favorite. Watch that movie in, uh, in D.C. In, yeah. in, the, in the hotel. Well, yeah. Listen, I enjoy listening to you guys in the best. And uh, I hope we'll do it again. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, guys.